What is going on guys? Grape here. Of course today is Thursday so we got our This Week at Bungie. I will link this down in the description if you'd like to read over it for yourself. Let's go ahead and hop right into it and kind of talk about what they discussed uh, in the article for this week. First of all, they talked about ritual reputations. It says, looking at the data for season 15, Guardians were approaching the new Vanguard ranks differently than they initially assumed. According uh, to their findings, players were running more Vanguard strikes than they anticipated and they were uh, optimized for the new activity streak at a lower rate as well. So they used the data from the season of the loss to adjust the model to be more accurate with the actual behavior. So for season 16, expect increased Vanguard reputation on completion, uh, activity streak amounts, nightfall multipliers, and nightfall completion quality bonuses. Vanguard reputation gain should be approximately twice as fast for most players with the ability to optimize even faster by playing higher difficulty nightfalls and utilizing the activity streak more. So they're pretty much going to give us kind of a bonus to running those, uh, you know, strikes and kind of give us some, you know, extra, almost sounds like extra bonus rewards, you know, for doing a little bit more difficult things like the nightfalls. They said similarly uh, to the trials of Osiris was about 30% slower than they anticipated while not having an accelerated gain when higher ranks were in chief, uh, achieved. So they also feel like there were not value uh, winning rounds enough, especially players getting to round 20 wins and only seven uh, and at seven tickets. So they also have added a small amount of trials reputation at the match at the end of every round one in that match, which increases the base on how many ticket wins a player has. At the top end, each round one awards 21 reputation up to 105 extra reputation a match. This ideally speeds up the trial reputation gain by 50%. It says uh, there's a quick preview of returning trial rewards for next season. There's another weapon in the pipe, but they'll be leave. Uh, they will leave you to discover uh, when trials returns during the Witch Queen. It says so about the things they aren't changing yet. They're happy with the speed of Crucible reputation gain, though they look at the kind of again alongside iron banner vendor changes in the future gambit reputation gain was about 30 percent slower than desired but the gambit revamp coming in the witch queen uh, would likely a, a full season take them a full season kind of analyze the playlist and patterns before making any changes this is more details coming on that in the future uh, they also are not currently making any changes to active streak system or the placement of the ritual weapon ornaments they have heard your feedback on it and they don't believe it is currently meeting their design goals. It is intended to feel like a nice bonus for dedicated players, but rarely feel critical. Right now, it can sometimes feel too punishing to level a ritual playlist, but this is being particularly driven by Gambit and Vanguard reputations moving slower than intended, combining with the ritual ornaments being on the second rest or reset, excuse me. Uh, we have to see how the tweaks to the Vanguard reputation changes. A play style an hour to game before they make any changes across the board. So they also knew that it was annoying. Uh, it's a kind of a reminder which reputation bonus is active by Thursday or Friday. Starting with the Witch Queen, when double ranks or double rewards are active, those activities will have a modifier on the launch screen to remind you. That's kind of just kind of let you know what's going on, which will be a big help for a lot of players, I think, because sometimes we're not really sure what's going on with some of those events. You know until you know we get that information right before so that will be a good thing to kind of know so you have something on your screen when playing to know you know if there's double rewards or double ranks for that particular activity uh, this is as a reminder the four new battlegrounds coming with the new season are going to be behemoth on nessus oracle nessus hellstone europa and foothold on the cosmodrome says the actual battleground activities are direct launch no champion version of the battleground as these match the length and difficulty of the strikes in the playlist. Any bounties, quests, triumphs, or challenges used to reference strikes now reference Vanguard Ops instead. They kind of go on to talk about the night follows that have been slowly uh, kind of wanting to do some different things with challenges to apply to each of the nightfall difficulty ranks. One big outlier was the strike specific modifiers with damage boost and other effects that enhanced boss attacks. While some of them were cool and fun, who doesn't like getting uh, yeeted five miles of uh, course away but they said they also generally inconsistent and were punishing tactical play more than intended build crafting so they have removed these from nightfall starting at hero they also added a new style of burn uh, which will increase the player damage taken from a specific element by 50 percent and increase the player's damage done by 25 percent 
So most nightfalls already had a 25% damage received modifier. So this will be an across the board increase of 25% in both direction for that element. So not only is it going to hurt a little more, but you're also going to be able to do a little bit more damage yourself with that particular burn. It says they're moving the seasonal strike modifiers that they introduced in season 15 from the uh, Vanguard playlist to nightfalls. These are unique buffs and uh, things that boost or aid you if you learn in the combat themes of the season. For season 16, they're themed to kind of the void usage. Uh, they said these rotate weekly and appear on all hero, legend, and master nightfalls. We look forward to your feedback on these as they continue to kind of learn when the, you know, everything is out and they kind of can see how it is working within the nightfall itself. They said when they introduced the legend and master lost sectors in Beyond Light, they were forced to split the daily legend and master lost sector locations since there was no way to select difficulty within the public bubble. Thanks to some fresh technology built uh, for the upcoming Witch Queen campaign, this limitation is now removed. There is now a single daily law sector which has both legendary and master difficulties available at the same time, selectable at the entrance. So now we won't have two law sectors each day. We'll have one. You can either select to do, you know, the master difficulty or the legend difficulty, which will be a lot better in my opinion instead of having to travel and find out where they're located and go to two different locations if you're wanting to you know, farm certain exotic items. Now all you have to do is go to that one location and just kind of select what you want to do. So while they don't have any specific changes to talk about with the Crucible or Iron Banner uh, this week, they would like to address the long respawn times we've implemented with the 30th anniversary patch. When originally implement, uh, implemented this change, they were hoping it would spread out the pace of combat and reduce the number of times players spawned in were immediately killed by the same super and had to just kind of wipe them out again and respawn once again. Despite the initial intention, feedback has shown that it wasn't the best solution. So, so when we looked at the data, we saw that unclear uh, message par partially because we implemented the change at the same time as large ability tunings. So kills per minute were slightly down in the modes with longer respawns, team score, uh, delta was up a little. So when looking on both feedback and analy uh, analytics and seeing little definitively positive things, it was the obvious choice to revert the crucible spawns back to their original values. Uh, they also go ahead and talk about that there's going to be some HDR changes with uh, the game. Says Destiny is a beautiful game. Uh, they have hooked up or cooked up some amazing new solutions to take the adventure they love to make it even more stunning. So here's what you need to know. With Windows 10 and up, Windows HDR is now supported. They also talked about Windows full screen should provide, or the windowed full screen should provide the same or better performance compared to the exclusive full screen. Screenshots are now supported when playing in HDR on PC and display calibration improvements on all platforms. So players in HDR will see an updated calibration UI screen to adjust their settings. So there will be actual a HDR calibration setting on all platforms. I'm assuming they're meaning old gen and new gen that did not kind of you know talk about that when it comes to consoles i'm assuming this will be on old gen consoles as well but that will be really nice if you like to play in hdr you want to see the game look even better they will have those options uh in the game here very soon they also have talked about kind of getting a new community manager uh this is their uh, community team continues to grow into an even more awesome bunch of lovable nerds as they're stoked to add yet another one to their ranks as uh, so they're going to have a community manager in spain now which is of course, we're going to be a really cool thing. The game is continued to grow, and I think a lot of people over the years were really surprised at how much Destiny 2 has grown. Since it's gone free to play, it's gained a massive player base compared to even what it had to me uh, kind of at the beginning when it first came out and you had to buy the game. So they're getting more uh, community managers out there, which is always good for a game, in my opinion. Also, they kind of went on to talk about kind of at the end, they've been experiencing their, or experimenting with their anti-cheat measures through the years. And more tinkering is on the way. Since with the launch of season 15, the Bungie product security organization began to utilize the Battle Eye security. And in December, they began to survey a risky behaviors that they felt were kind of, you know, something that Battle Eye was going to keep an eye on or some things that, you know, the game should keep an eye on or people they should keep an eye on. Based on the review, we've identified 68 players that were banned in association with this uh, since August. Of course, those 64 players were identified as having no other indicators they were attempting to attack Destiny 2. These players were unbanned as of January the 24th. So they're trying to go back and kind of look at some of the bans they have made uh, since the uh, kind of 
you know, since they've kind of implemented the battle eye security and updated and done some things of that nature, they're trying to go back and make sure that everyone they have banned was kind of legit. That, that there was not, you know, something that the system found that actually was not them cheating or something of that nature. So they are unbanning some players. So if you were wrongly banned, I'm sure they're probably going to want you to contact them and kind of let them know so they can kind of review the case again. Anyway, guys, that is it for this week. So leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. I think those changes to the Vanguard are going to be the biggest in the nightfalls. I'm really happy to hear about that stuff. I think that's going to be uh, pretty enjoyable to be, you know, running strikes and, and running nightfalls and things of that nature and actually have a chance to gain better rewards and things, uh, better streaks, whatever the case may be. But leave me a comment your thoughts about this week in Bungie. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course, the affiliates here on the channel, Empire Jerky and Amazon Associates. Also check out the merch store that is linked in the description as well. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.